Hi, this is Dr. Ray, and I'm here to give you the short version on development of the cranium. There are two types of uh, bone development where uh, you have embryologic tissues that are going to develop into bone. The first kind is called intramembranous ossification, and uh, this is where you have tissue, that connective tissue precursors that turn into bone without developing into cartilage first. And then the other type is endochondrial ossification, which is when you have a cart cartilaginous precursor that will then further develop into bone. And so uh, here I just have labeled a few different uh, places where you can see uh, intermembranous here, and here you can see uh, endochondral ossification. And so we're gonna specifically hone in on development of the cranium. Um, the cranium is going to develop from mesenchyme that surrounds the brain coming from the neural tube. Some of the mesenchyme, if you remember, came from neural crest cells in this area. So you have connective tissue uh, in the head and neck region that comes from neural crest cells. So that's unique and unusual compared to the rest of the body. The rest of the uh, mesenchyme in the head, or specifically turning into the cranium, came from mesoderm. So you kind of have a mixture here. And there's not really a di division, like if it's uh, intramembranous, it has to be one, and endochondral is another. It's, it doesn't, it's not striated that way. But the cranium is divided into two general parts, uh, if, you, if you remember. The neurocranium, so that's going to be what is going to encase the actual brain. And then the visceracranium, which is um, really where you have a lot of attachment to um, facial muscles and um, have other structures like the eyes and uh, in the oral cavity and everything that's going to be uh, associated with the visceral cranium. All right, so the neurocranium um, is going to have these this bones here, I just put this in here for your review. That's what's going to make up the neurocranium and house the brain. And then here is the listing of the viscera cranium uh, that's going to be in this area here. Okay. So uh, if you look from a superior view, this is looking down on the um, neurocranium, you can see they have highlighted here in beige the area that is going to be the cartilaginous uh, neurocranium. And that is collectively uh, the base of the cranium. So um, where you, they have the brain is going to sit in there and have contact with uh, this part. It's going to be at the base. And, um, and that, so it's not really uh, surprising. So the occipital bone, body, the sphenoid, ethmoid are going to be cartilaginous in their origin. And so I like to kind of put a little application in there to help remember because otherwise it's you know difficult to remember um, everything, all these facts. Why do you think the skull base uh, might form from cartilage and um, instead of the sides and the top that is going to be intramembranous and not go through a cartilaginous precursor? Well, if you think about it practically, there are a lot of blood vessels and nerves that go through the base of the skull. And so um, you're gonna have cartilage that's a lot more pliable, and so you're gonna have less um, uh, less problems. And that's just, it's not really a, necessarily a uh, uh, cause and effect, but it sort of helps me remember what part of the cranium comes from cartilaginous precursor. And so this is just a summary slide here. I put some slides in here to show you. Um, so here's the, the, pretend like here's the brain in here. So uh, neurocranium are gonna be the bones that are um, in this region. And so the, the beige area, the base of the cranium is gonna be cartilaginous neurocranium. I've listed them down here for your uh, enjoyment. Um, the membranous neurocranium, so not going through cartilaginous precursors are on the sides and top, as you can see those highlighted here in that uh, beautiful mauve color. The cartilaginous visocranium is uh, located here, which you've learned or you are learning when you're uh, going through the pharyngeal arches. And then the membranous visocranium is depicted here in pink. Okay, so that's, that's really the concept there. Another concept you need to be aware of is that um, uh, during fetal life, these, these bones uh, that are developing in the calvarium are separated by dense connective tissue. Uh, and as you can see, they're not, they're not fused and all one plate of bone. They're actually connected by dense connective tissue in these fibrous joints that we call sutures. 
And um, there are uh, areas where these sutures meet where you have this uh, spanning dense connective tissue um, and it's, it's, they're rather large and so you end up with six areas uh, in the developing calvaria that they are referred to as fontanelles. And so uh, you might have some clinical application. You can use these fontanelles to check for uh, dehydration and other things that you learn about in your flip classroom session. And uh, we really need this kind of flexibility in the calvaria at the time of fetal development and fetal life and then um, really during the birth process so that you could have um, movement of, the, of these bones of the head during birth to allow for a successful birth. And we also need to be aware of the fact that the cranium is going to change and continue to grow. And so these sutures um, are really important so that the brain can, can enlarge. Uh, but there are also other things that happen um, to the, the cranium here. Um, we're going to have a lot of growth in the face and the jaw. So just looking at this lateral view, you can see that how small this, this face and jaw is of this um, newborn versus an adult face and jaw. So you're going to have a lot of growth of the face and jaw. Um, you're going to have teeth that's going to help there, but you also have growth of paranasal sinuses that makes this area larger, and then you also have growth of the mastoid process. You can see there's no mastoid process, which makes the facial nerve vulnerable. Uh, and then there are some common cranial birth defects you want to probably be aware of. Um, there are several of them that are incompatible with life, but not all of them are. Um, we talked about acrania or marencephaly when we did the neural tube. I just wanted to remind you of this birth defect um, when we did the development of the neural tube and um, the nervous system. And then craniosis. Craniosynostosis is um, a condition where you have prenatal fusion of the cranial sutures. And so you end up having a uh, cranium that has a different shape than the typical shape of the cranium. You can see here uh, this, this child here before they had uh, surgery to help the, the cranium grow in a, um, a more even pattern. And so there are different um, there are different names that are associated depending on the suture that fuses. So, for example, um, oh, and I wanted to, to point out here, if you, uh, the way to find this out is if the parallel to the restricted, so where you have the restricted suture parallel to it, you have exaggerated growth. And then perpendicular to the suture, you have restricted growth. And so that's how you can kind of predict the shape of the cranium that and figure out which suture, although you use imaging for that as well. So um, uh, scaphocephaly uh, that's depicted here is where the sagittal suture closes earlier, early, and the um, cranium becomes long and narrow. Okay, what shapes like this a child here. Bra brachycephaly is where the coronal suture closes earlier early so that the uh, cranium ends up being high and tower-like, and that um, happens relatively often. And then uh, plagiocephaly is where um, the coronal suture only closes on one side, and so the cranium becomes asymmetric. Now, most of the plagiocephaly that you see in photos are called positional plagiocephaly, which isn't something that happened during development. I just wanted to point that out that actually that's what these two pictures are because I couldn't find a picture of developmental plagiocephaly. And then uh, trigonocephaly is where you have a closure, premature closure of the frontal or my metopic suture. And so you have uh, this uh, wedge shape uh, forehead that develops um, because you can't have growth here in the horizontal plane. All right, that's all I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about cranium um, development.